welcome to Reso Coder. In the previous part we made multiplayer possible and in this part we are gonna glue everything together. We will create a menu scene in which we will be able to select if we want to play multiplayer or with AI. So first up let's create a scene called menu. We will go to scenes, right click and create new scene. We will call this menu and let's double click on it. We want to create an empty game object called background, so right click create empty background. Now we want to select the art folder from our assets and drag BG to this background and also drag BG border over here. Awesome! Now we want to add a UI and we are going to make it easier for ourselves. We are going to go to scenes, main and we are going to copy this restart canvas, so just control C. And now when we are back in the menu scene, we want to control V to paste it in here. When you normally create canvas, an event system is also created. But when we just copy and paste a canvas into our scene, no event system is created. So what we need to do is create a new canvas, so UI canvas. Now event system is created as you can see here and we can safely delete this canvas which we have created just so that this event system will be created. We can now enable this canvas and drag main camera over to this render camera field. We can delete loose text from here and also we want to select these two objects and drag them outside this panel just inside this canvas restart. And we can also safely delete this panel. We want to rename this win text to title text and this is obviously gonna say air hockey. It's gonna be anchored to the top and let's move it a bit to the top so we can just move it up and this is probably right. Now let's do something with this restart button. It's gonna be called play button. The text is obviously gonna say play instead of restart. The button can have dimensions of 250 by 250 instead of this huge button. And we want to center it, so position X will be 0 and also position Y will be 0. And if you haven't already noticed, this tutorial series is not really about design and about UI and about art in games, it's really about the basic stuff that you need to know if you want to create a game in Unity. And also, it's more about the programming side of things. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's create a toggle with which we will be able to select if we want to play multiplayer or with AI. So right click on canvas, which we should probably just rename to canvas because this is definitely not canvas restart. So just right click on it now and create UI toggle. We are gonna call this multiplayer toggle. And I bet that on YouTube you cannot even see it because it's too small. Let's make it bigger, something like 700 by 200. And as you can see here, it's gotten a bit bigger, but the text and the toggle itself is still really small. If we want to fix that, we need to change the child objects of this multiplayer toggle. For example, this background should be 100 by 100. And you can already see it in the game view here. We also want to change the child of this background object, so this check mark. This should not be anchored to the center, but it should rather stretch. And this should stretch perfectly, so 0 on left, 0 on top, on right and on bottom as well. And now we can see even this check mark, which is totally awesome. Finally, let's change the label. This should have a space of something like 75 from the left, and from the top, right and bottom it should be 0. First up, let's change the font to M plus 1 and bold, so it looks nice. And let's bump up the font size to something around 100. Also, let's change the alignment to be centered on all axes. And let's move this multiplayer toggle a bit down. So just select it in the hierarchy, grab it in the scene view and move it a bit down. This check mark and its background is a bit to the top left, but we want it to be centered. So let's select this background. We want to anchor it to center left. And also the position Y will be 0. Now we can change this label to say multiplayer. Alright, so now that we have this basic UI done, let's add this scene to build. Otherwise we will not be able to use this menu scene. So we want to go to file, build settings and click on add open scenes. Nice, and we want to do the same thing with the main scene. 
So again, go to File, Build Settings, and Add Open Scenes. Now we want to go to the Scripts folder and create another two folders inside it, Main Scene and Menu Scene. Now we want to drag all of the scripts that were already inside this folder to Main Scene, just like this. And in the root folder of scripts, we want to create a new script called Game Values. So create C# -sharp script Game Values. This is gonna be used for passing whether or not we want to play multiplayer between scenes. So let's open this script up in Visual Studio. We can delete all of these using statements. This is not gonna derive from mono behavior. We can also delete this void start and void update since it doesn't derive from mono behavior. And all that we want to have in here is public static bool is multiplayer. And we can also make this whole class static. When a class is static, it can only have static members. Now we want to create a new script called Menu Manager and we will create it inside this Menu Scene folder which is inside Scripts folder. So right click, create C# -sharp Script Menu Manager. We can delete these two methods and it's also going to be using Unity Engine dot Scene Management. We are going to create just two methods here: Public Void Play Game which is gonna call scene manager dot load scene with the name of main. The other method that we wanna have here is gonna be public void set multiplayer and this is gonna be used by our toggle in the menu scene. So public void set multiplayer, this is gonna accept one argument of type bool and it's gonna be called for example is on. This argument will be passed in by the toggle itself. Inside here we just wanna set our is multiplayer field from our game values class to be equal to this boolean is on. So game values dot is multiplayer is equal to is on. Now we wanna go back to Unity, open up the menu scene, and let's create an empty game object called scene manager. Let's drag it up, and we wanna drag the menu manager script onto here. And we want to set up our UI to call the methods on this menu manager script. So play button should call a method on the game object scene manager, on the component menu manager, and the method should be play game. Also this multiplayer toggle should call a method. This method is also on the game object scene manager inside the menu manager script, and it's gonna be set multiplayer. It's important that you select this dynamic bool here and not this static parameter set multiplayer method. So just let's select this dynamic bool set multiplayer. And let's also untick this is on so it's gonna be off by default. And now if we play this game, the multiplayer is turned off as you can see here. And if we click on play, theoretically this AI script should engage and it should move this paddle towards the puck. But it's not doing that. That's because now the AI is disabled. We need to manually check our is multiplayer field inside game values and we need to set everything up so that AI will be off when we want to play multiplayer but it will be on when we want to play with AI. The perfect candidate for this control logic is player controller script. It's in the scripts, main scene and let's open it up. Over here we have a list of players, but we cannot use this for the functionality that we want. This list is only holding references to player movement scripts. We need to have a reference to the whole game object. And aside from that, we really cannot tell which player inside this players list is the player blue, which can also be an AI player. That's because of the flexibility of this list, because when a player is disabled, it disappears from this list, and when it's enabled, it's added back to this list. If you are wondering what I'm talking about, you should definitely check out the previous tutorial. And so because of this flexibility, we really cannot tell the order of the players inside this list. What we need to do is to create a public field of type game object, and it's gonna be called AI player, and we wanna add a start method, so void start, and here we wanna check if game values dot is multiplayer, and if it is multiplayer, we want to disable AI and enable player movement on this AI player. So AI player dot get component of type player movement, and we want to enable this. So dot enabled is going to be equal to true. On the other hand, we want to disable the AI script. So AI player dot get component AI script, 
and this will have the enabled property set to false. Now we can copy this, add an else class, we can paste it in here and just flip this around. So this is gonna be false and AI script is gonna be turned on so this will be true. Now let's go back to Unity and let's go into the main scene, select scene manager and we wanna drag this player blue into this AI player field inside player controller script. Let's go back to menu now and let's test if everything works. So as you can see the multiplayer is disabled and when we now click on play, the AI should engage. And it does, this is completely awesome. Now I am gonna just lose this game. And we have a problem. Aside from me losing, we cannot get back to the menu scene. We can only restart. To fix that, we need to add another button to this canvas. So let's go back to the main scene, enable restart canvas and we need to add another button to it. We can just duplicate this restart button, so press on Control D. This is gonna be called menu button, it's gonna say menu and also it will have a red color. Now let's set this to somewhere around negative 400 or 450 and we need to create another method inside this UI manager script. So we wanna edit script, we wanna go all the way down and here we wanna add another method show menu, public void show menu and this is gonna call scene manager this class is from the Unity Engine dot scene management namespace, so we can just control and dot and hit enter, which is gonna add this namespace for us. And now we wanna load scene, and the name of the scene is menu. And now we wanna connect everything up in Unity, so this menu button is gonna call a method on UI manager, but not restart game, but rather show menu. If we now disable this canvas, go to the menu scene and play the game, we can even turn on the multiplayer and when we now play, now we can play this game and let's win it. How cool am I? I'm gonna win against myself. Now we can press on the menu button and it's gonna take us back to the menu and now we can leave this multiplayer to be turned off like this and now when we hit play, nothing is gonna work. That's because the time scale is set to zero. This means that nothing is happening inside our game. To fix this, we need to go to the method show menu located inside UI manager script. The simplest fix is just to call time.timescale and set it equal to 1, just like we do inside this restart game method. Now when we go back to Unity, press on play, we wanna play multiplayer now, and we are gonna win this game, simple as that. Now we can press on menu here, it's gonna take us back to menu and before multiplayer was turned on and now we are gonna just turn it off and we can press on play again and everything is gonna work, no freezing, no nothing, everything is nice and working. And just for good measure let's do it one more time. This time I am gonna lose because the AI is really strong and we could just tweak it a bit, we could change its speed to be lower but I am not gonna bother with doing that in this tutorial. And now we can go back to menu, select multiplayer again and press on play and we can again move the players around and everything is nice and working. Alright, so that's it for this video. If you wanna get the code written in this tutorial, go to the link in the video description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you, please give it a like and also share it. We are slowly approaching the end of this series, but if you don't wanna miss more videos like this, also from Xamarin Android or from just plain old C Sharp, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. If you have anything to say, please leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.